Hey everybody. Hi. 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 Hello. I don't I think I know everybody, so I'm not gonna go into the introduction of myself. Um my three dimensional self. Hans is here. So the 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 subject I'm really, really going to be touching on is call is something that has been in my being put in my head constantly, and it's the term is called the quickening. Anybody understand that here? Okay. You, up the yeah. yeah. Thank you. The is that good? Yeah. Okay. It's called the quickening, and I have no idea what that means for anybody else, but. I, I, it's a, it's a feeling of acceleration of humanity. And to me, when I see, when I, when I get the visualizations, because the communication comes through, through visualization, visualizations, through people, through experiences, and it's compounded, but the theme still runs until I get it. So that's how I've been being taught. Um, and... Two things I'm going to address on, and that was my main subject, and that, uh, uh, and it's called the quickening, and it's kind of like the feeling of it is something's going to happen, and something's going to happen soon, and so uh, this is uh, it's really working on as far as staying in the moment. So I just have notes. I do not have a presentation. So I'm just going to um, take Nancy's beautiful advice and just be myself and talk. Ooh, that's a scary one, huh? Set yourself up for a lot of judgment. Um, so don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Yes. So here's, here's kind of the timeline that has been presented. 1920s. Um, Hamabeya and Yogananda both received the, the message about the same time, and where do they go? Where do they come? America. America. <laughs> Here. Yeah. yeah. Both of them, I believe, knew. It's, it's kind of like what, what I, when, when I'm going into that vibration or whatever you want to call it, I, I'm just seeing that. It's like two men, beautiful manifest, you know, manifestations of Christ consciousness, um, come in, flick on a light. So they flicked on these little lights. They came over here, and they, it's almost like they planted these seeds. So in the 20s, why did they plant? How, why then? Well, my belief is that because we were in our child, and the child is the most receptive to knowledge and energy and most receptive, less judgmental. So in the 20s, what was it? The Roaring 20s. It was my time, everybody was gay. <laughs> so, uh, it, so the vibration of the, of the mass consciousness was a vibration of the inner child. That's my belief. So we set the ground, we, plant, we set what we did at that point, humanity was in a place of openness of joy, of fun, you know? They were chilling, they were having a cheeseburger, having a cocktail, okay? Um, it, was, it was, so that, mag the law of magnetism brought them, those beings, they could have gone anywhere, you know, I don't know, if, you know, roll the dice or what, that magnetized them to this soil that we st that were in, th this country, this place, this place. I mean, it, I just am so humbled that out of, you know, the vastness of, of, of the, the earth that we all are honored to sit here and be in this lighthouse that we sit in around these beings that we are next to, you know, because what are the odds? I mean, this is a very, it's very small, it's a very pinpoint, you know, here we are, Hamid Bay, big time. Hama Bay, big time. Yogananda, big time. Well, then they sent Yogananda walking. Hama Bay hung out. All right. 
because then the fear got back here, 1930s, the fear wall, the powers that be, we're going to say, the controllers, manipulators, ones that have high consciousness but low, low, uh, bad intention. Uh, well, it was what she was saying. It's about find your intent, right? They they have a high consciousness, but a, uh, uh, their um, their level of fear is still too high. They can't, you know, forgive them. They don't know what not what they do. So here it is. So they, they planted the seeds. Boom, balance. Maybe the law of balance. 1930s. I I believe the collapse of the stock market was a good thing. It it because it was heading. Now you know it's. It, Things are becoming, the light's on and brighter, and things are becoming more transparent. Even the rich ones are saying, it's rigged, guys, it's rigged. Yeah. Right? So that collapse, but, you know, it's just like if, if, you, if you see the UFO and the beings come, right? If you're full of fear and the conscious, if you're living in the vibration of fear and the fear consciousness, what is your reaction going to be? Fear. If you're living in the light consciousness and love consciousness, what is your reaction going to be? Love and light. So we weren't quite there yet, right? So here we go, you know? So now we have to transmute energy. Boom, here come. So all that fear with that collapse. And what, what else happened? Farmers' greed killed the soil. Fear of lack. Fear of lack, right? So that time, and I'm doing an overview of, of what I'm seeing, you know, that's all I'm here, I, I can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not a historian. <laughs> so that overview, fear manifestation, and then the 1940s, that manifestation produced Hitler, right? We magnetized Hitler, it was our fault, not his, he was just doing his job, okay? The law of attraction, the trans, you know, is showing us the things that we did not want to see of ourselves. It's turning that light on, you know. Birthing a baby ain't pretty. All hell must break loose, right? Right? So the war, you know, there it was, you know, it's not the war to end all wars. They said that again, didn't they? <coughs> so then we, 1950s, the age of denial. <laughs> <laughs> all right, selling the lie in a way, okay? A lot of stuff was happening. There's a lot of denial. We, we, you know, smoke and mirrors, right? There's a lot of smoke and mirrors in the 50s. What did we do? We were serving two masters. And the other master was getting a lot, the master of let your company take care of you, let corporate America take care of you. We're forgetting who really takes care of us, right? So those are my grandparents. Those are, right? Um, and and it's, it, it's all part of our mass learning as humans, you know? You know? I don't know about you, but I learned the most from my mistakes, my mistakes, not from my accomplishments. So innocence, it was also, in, there was a lot of innocence in that age, I believe. And there was good and bad, you know. They, they knew, they came in, they planted the seeds, Yogananda, Harmon Bay. Um, during that time, where John was, I was uh, noticing that there, in the 80s especially, I don't want to jump far, too far forward, but um, the East meets West, that, that energy was coming. That energy was, you know, because of the soil here, you know, I'm not talking about physical soil, but the soil of, of a consciousness here. Somehow, this is New Jerusalem. We are here. It is in our country. The energy in that area has to be transmuted. It's just too, there's too much negative energy in the Middle East. It's not there anymore. It's moved. This is New Jerusalem. It's the uh, United States. So change didn't happen very quickly then. If you see, if you find, if you kind of move into the vibration, you, you know, it's like, yeah, it was a kind of laid back, everybody kind of taking it easy. Um, but, you know, still, we weren't, it, it was uh, still some, a lot of ignorance, but innocence and ignorance combined. Um, 
slavery, soft, false master, the, it, was a, it was a backhanded kind of slavery, I believe. Freedom wasn't really freedom. We were kind of, I feel like we were kind of stuck in, this is how you act, this is how you do it. And, uh, you know, racism and all that was buried, was buried. The light was dimmer, believe it or not. Even though I was supposed to be that, that was, that was a good times, the 50s. It was a good times to be in denial, I believe. Um, 60s. Oops, the light comes back on. <laughs> Rebellion. Rebellion. The light got brighter. People started questioning everything. Just like Christ questioned everything in his time. Okay? Rebellion, reseeding, rebirthing, civil wars. Civil wars. If it is above, so below, microcosm, macrocosm, we were also looking at ourselves individually and saying, what are my lies that, I'm, uh, that I hold on to? What are the misconceptions I was fed? What's the, bet, what's the programming that I need to unprogram from the innocent deniers, per se, right? What is a programming that I've accepted that's not my programming, but programming of society that I live in? The programming of the, of the, of the beautiful, loving parents that had programming. Whatever. The, it, it, was, it was a rebellion of all that. Questioning authority and questioning who's, t who's giving you the ideas, who's creating your mind, and taking our mind and ourselves and our souls back, to, per se. This, the products of that time are now in this time. I believe that the garden of light, per se, of those seeds is in harvest. We are, I'm excited, John is excited, we feel the buzz, and I think everybody in this room, especially after the new year, for me, feels the buzz. We're close. We've got, I firmly believe we've met the, what is it, critical mass on this planet. I firmly believe we've already met the critical mass. So, the harmonic convergence, does anybody have that date? It was um, August of 1987, I believe. That was a turning point. The harmonic convergence, if I may know, is we're aligned uh, in the universe. We're going to complete line up of the universe. And that's when yeah, God sends his light ray. You're ready. You've magnetized the light ray. You did it. Boom. He shot the light ray right at us. But you know, this vibration moves slower in the third dimension. By the way, God's here. He says hi. <laughs> and he wants to know how you like his third dimension. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't his third dimension beautiful? Yeah. So stop trying to jump around. You're here. Enjoy it. <laughs> um, Cheryl, so... 2013, everybody in the world now with the computers and everything is so much more unified and connected quickly. So here's the, this is the quickening. Do you see what I'm saying? That it's accelerating because of our communication is that quick. This is a little toy, guys, showing us our subconscious, right? Google, subconscious. Look, kids, a toy. This is how you are. This is who you are, <laughs> right? So this is Q, the law of one, Ra. The law of one, Ra energy. This guy back here, Ra. Ra, Ra. <laughs> okay. The other, so if I could be so bold as to make a prediction and a prophecy, because they've been bugging me, hmm. but you know, putting your head on, you know, putting your, 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 this is not a, you know, spirituality is not a spectator sport. <laughs> um, 2020, right? 22, master builder. 22 is also the number of who? 
Christ. No, 33. 22 is what I, when I looked it up because it's been following me for a couple of months. So 2020, it's a, that's a short period. It's three years. But it's So they're showing me the Last Supper right now, and I, so I need to talk about that. Um, and then I'll read a little. You know, Jesus' name was Yeshua ben Joseph. That's his real name. Um, he was just the real guy with some Christ consciousness that brought the Christ consciousness. Of course, religion and all that wants to make him so special that you could never obtain him and who he was. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna give you a little thing. They're talking about the Last Supper right now, and then I'll read some some Yeshua letter for you. We're just gonna open it and see what he wants you to hear. Um, do I have time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You know, and, and you go back to 2013 too. The, the Indians, uh, that's because we're in the great mystery now. Even they don't know. It's, we're out of the long count. We're in the quick count. The Kali Yuga, right? If you want to know more about that, that guy back there is an expert in the Kali Yuga. <laughs> so it's a cycle of, of our souls and growth. And third dimension is quite nice. I, I've always enjoyed it. All right. So the Last Supper... Uh, the breaking of the bread and passing it to each of its disciples was he was passing on the Christ consciousness simple the symbology you are the same as me I am not the, a special I'm showing you this Je Yeshua Ben Joseph showing you okay I planted the seed I turned on the light but you are the same as me so he took his disciples and passed the bread of Christ consciousness to his disciples. And now it has spread all over the world. And what was the prediction? When it's gone to every corner of the earth, I will be back in physical form. And many, and many, religion. <laughs> of Christ consciousness. So, no, a really interesting thing that happened to me day, today is, you know, for a while they've been bugging me about, you know, teaching me through simple symbols. It says, look at your middle name. Then if you want to know a little bit more about that personally, I will share it with you, my past, and that I should not be here in physical form anymore. Okay, but... Anyway, so that was part of my teaching to look back and learn from my past. The Ka. And, and so I was at a lady's house, one of my dance students, who is the CEO of a company called Theological Book Network. They send books, they're nonprofit, all over the world, theological and, and um, philosophical books to third world countries and, and start their universities and libraries. This lady is a earth mover, and her company is here in Grand Rapids, too, and the only one. And they set up all over third world, everywhere. So I go into her office because I finally, I finally got over there to see her place and, and uh, you know, all the books and uh, back there. Um, and they set up libraries and universities in all the third world, all these third world countries. They're a multi-million dollar nonprofit. Um, and so I go in and, and you know, on all the books, of course, it's she's got a little bin in her office, and right on top is this book. I said, okay, I guess I'm talking about that this weekend. <laughs> Tell me what to say. Um, and this is, this is a shared Egyptian hieroglyph, Egyptian word, meaning the body of the soul, the, the physical manifestation of the soul or spirit. And this is from India. This book is from India. Well, the Ka is also a representation of uh, in a hieroglyph in Egypt, in Egyptian history, right, John? So they said, look at your middle name. The first two letters is K-A, Ka. And they keep doing that. They keep doing that to me. R-L, Carl. But it's Ka. It says, so, so be it. And enlighten up, right? <laughs> okay. So that's my New Year's resolution: be the car. Get in the car. 
right. Here we go. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> You're good. In this multi-dimensionality, which is still pervaded and is as light itself, condensation continues. And here your scientists begin to tap into it. So you can see how many steps removed they are. But their light begins to condense into the particle of matter. Again, the explosion occurs as the one basic atom, or atom A, <laughs> explodes in the Big Bang. And the multitude of bodies, of planetary bodies, including your central sun of your tiny little universe, is birthed. The physical universe of which you are a part of as a human being is vast beyond comprehension, yet it is a tiny speck of dust. It is a, a tiny speck of light floating seamlessly, freely, seemingly freely, like a tiny drop of milk that seems to have separated itself from the body of milk. And it is unaware of the multidimensionality of radiant light and spirit and God in which it floats out of which it has been given its very existence. You are, therefore, not outside of spirit. You are held lovingly, your whole physical dimension, in the center of spirit. As this condensation continues, what you have been told to call life begins. Conditions are set up, emerging from what? Pure chance? Hardly. It emerges out of the pure potentiality the power and the perfect intelligence to create. Although now that creativity is expressing itself more and more out of fear, not out of pure joy. It is like taking a note of a flute and muffling it slightly so that it has a different quality, yet it is still pure energy. For what can fear be but energy? Just as love is energy, compassion is energy, sadness is energy, and anger is energy. Do you see? Fear is just an energy and nothing more. In itself, it is perfectly neutral. For all events are neutral. And fear, being merely a dance or a play of energy itself, must be entirely neutral, an entirely neutral event until something arises to perceive and experience it differently, and what is that? The birth of the egoic consciousness. I'm just going to leave that because that's the one I opened to. So, the, and I'm just going to end with a prayer and a, and a little mantra. So, I, um, you know, if I have a new crowd, I'll have to talk a little bit about my my past experiences and so forth. But I think we all, you know, I've come here and and uh, I have been led here, and are, and it'd be so interesting to know everybody's path and how they've got to these seats and how I, we got to this place. Um, and I really appreciate you all let me come up here and banter. Um, so. I don't think there's a question among us in, in any of our minds that we are here and we are in this moment. We came here incarnated to be here and we, are have, we do have work to do. It's, it's not a spectator sport. <laughs> there's lots of evidence if you look. I'm going to give you one. It's, it was real special this month. So, you know, the Clemson and Alabama game. Anybody watch that? What was the, mo the most important part of that game was the end, yeah, right. wasn't it? you notice uh, that coach as well 104 years it took them to beat Alabama and they did it best game I've ever seen mm -hmm. I think it's the best game I've ever seen <laughs> college Except football huh Except for the Cubs. yeah oh the Cubs too look at all the things man <laughs> all of them evidence right things are happening if what even the chump jump John drunk chump whatever <laughs> right <laughs> He's going to be one of our greatest teachers, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, I, <laughs> I know. We manifested him. <laughs> yeah. um, he's the old school. Okay, so, so at the end of the game, that coach, the first thing, he said, what, what won the game? 
He said, love. An old jock. Love. Love. We all love each other. That's what won the game. And God. Thank you. I'm going to go to the locker room now. <laughs> They're here. So, I'm going to... So, if we can just... Did I turn this on? So if we could just get kind of in our heart center a little bit and just kind of share a prayer with you. Dear God, help me to only allow my thoughts and ideas to be created by inspiration and wisdom. I will consciously apply truth and love to every situation. Lead me to freedom from my negative fears and actions. Help me to know, feel, and form my true mission in this life as part of your spirit in your kingdom here on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Thank you.